Hey guys, thanks for joining us today on Men's Leadership Podcast, and we are just here with Jason Loudon. We are so thankful for him, and uh, he is a principal at a school and works with a lot of students, and right now is kind of the time when students are getting back into school, so you're really busy right yeah, now. it's a busy time. <laughs> and, uh, but it's also for us as fathers, as husbands, you know, we're kind of uh, readjusting now with kids going back to school, and so we're going to be talking about how do we raise up the next generation, and how do we partner with educators, and how do we partner in our homes uh, as our kids are in school, and some of the things that they're facing today, and how can we be better husbands, fathers, and men after the heart of God as we raise up this next generation in Christ. So, Jason, thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Yeah. Hey, tell us a little bit about you, like uh, what brought you to Middle Tennessee, how you met Amber, and, yeah. you know, just kind of your story. Yeah, I mean... I guess in a nutshell, I'm actually from uh, California. Okay. A lot of my family still lives out there. Uh, moved around a lot as a kid, but my mom and I settled uh, in Georgia and ended up going to University of the South, Swanee. Mm -hmm. And so kind of from there, just really fell in love with Tennessee and got, you know, just connected with the Nashville or Chattanooga area and ended up just getting a teaching job um, yeah. here in the middle Tennessee area. And so um, that's what kind of got me here. And then as luck would have it, uh, Amber ended up teaching at the same school. We got we got paired up. Um, home rooms got paired up for a canned food drive, and ah. it was sort of love at first sight after <laughs> that. So, um, yeah, we've been been here in Franklin ever since. So. Yeah. So, so tell us, like, what got you into teaching? What got you into being an educator? What was that inspired you with uh, raising up that next generation? Well, I think probably like most educators would say, it was, you know, the quickest way I could think to get rich um, was, <laughs> no, I, 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 like most educators would say, I think it's just coming back to thinking about teachers and coaches that, that impacted me. Yeah. And um, I won't say that it was something that I knew, you know, from five years old that I wanted to be a teacher, but it's certainly somewhere between kind of high school and college just clicked. I, I, I knew that no matter what I did, I wanted it to be something where, you know, you're investing in other people and you're able to uh, see kind of the returns maybe not always immediately and mm -hmm. maybe it's even something that, that you don't see in real time but that you you kind of hear of um, people just spreading their r wings and thriving and mm. you know finding their finding their niche yeah um, you know it's just a, it's about growth you yeah. know we talk about that a lot is you know kind of that growth mindset so that you have students that uh, have a lot of gifts have a lot of talents have a lot of students that uh, have skills that they themselves may not even be aware of so it's like getting them to kind of unlock their own oh, potential yeah. and then have that realization um, it's just it's just the best in the world and seeing every kid can grow no matter kind of where they're at um, mm. is it's really cool that's it's awesome. really cool well I'll tell you as a dad of uh, three kids one in elementary one in middle and one in high school I just want to say thank you you know because um, you guys have our kids seven to eight hours a day and uh, just the way that you pour into kids and that, that heart for unleashing their potential and just helping them become all. And I just, I want to say thank you. So yeah. I appreciate that. Well, and it's, uh, the teachers are the ones that are, yeah. you know, they're, they, they do an incredible job. Yeah. I feel like administration, it's really like what, what obstacles can we remove so that they can kind of do the, mm. the important work. So, but no, I appreciate that. Yeah. Well, tell me about your faith story, like coming to know Christ and then how God's been working in your life. And yeah, so really, really wasn't brought up in church, to mm -hmm. be honest with you. Um, my mom uh, was recently divorced, and I think, you know, I was about eight years old or so. I think at that point, just really wanted to uh, to get us kind of rooted in some, some community. And so we, we started going to an Episcopal church. Mm -hmm. Awesome. It was a great experience. You know, got involved in the youth group. Um, I'd say, though, it was probably more middle school Um you know, probably getting like invited to, to friends, churches and camps and, and, and outreach thing. Did do some mission work stuff with my church. And mm -hmm. I think all of that was just great um, exposure for me. But if I'm being honest, I think my faith story probably um, began with more an introduction to God out of kind of a fearfulness, you mm -hmm. know, of like, oh, you know, I'd, I want to do this or I want to live this way, but, you know, it's or else, you yeah. know, kind of thing. And so... As I, as I grew older, um, you know, religion's just always been something philosophically that I've enjoyed kind of engaging in conversations with and whatnot, but I think it really did lead me, lead me to, in my young adulthood, to this just, I guess for lack of a better word, belief mm -hmm. um, that God was sort of a hands-off kind of a God mm -hmm. that was, was kind of 
you know, was there, was our creator, but, you know, is, is so respectful of our kind of free will that it's mm-hmm. kind of like, hey, you know, have at it, you know, and if you need me, call sort of thing. And so it's been just awesome. Um, you know, I, I met Amber. Uh, she comes from a real strong spiritual background. Mm-hmm. We had um, toured, you know, some different churches, whatever. And I, I, I think really just in the last few years, mm-hmm. um, getting anchored and just having my my world blown mm-hmm. to, to, to really get that perspective that, man, God's anything but a passive sideline thing, mm-hmm. right? I mean, he wants mm-hmm. to be involved mm-hmm. and he wants to, he wants to use us. And so getting to, to recalibrate a little bit to, you know, doing a lot of the same work, but to frame it in how can we do this as kingdom work and how yes. can we make sure that, um, you know, we're not on the sidelines and God's not on the sidelines, but he's right in the thick of it and he's the source of, of everything we need. So, um, yeah, I'd say the last last several years have just been uh, critical mm-hmm. in, in my faith story of just mm-hmm. really getting that connection, building a relationship with God as opposed to just knowing about God or learning about God or, you know, those kind of conversations about God. So. Yeah. Hey, tell me what, as we talk about kind of the next generation, as a principal in your seat, what do you see are some of the challenges that the next generation faces um, that, that you just say, man, th- this is something that they're going through, they're dealing with. Sure. Um, I, I mean, I think pragmatically, but then also, um, you know, big picture. I mean, I, I do think that cell phones, social media, I think is uh, unlocked, you know, great opportunity, but obviously come with it, you know, telling, s- saying nothing that parents don't already know, but but a lot of challenges just through the, the amount of exposure. And I think just the students being saturated in this, this um, mindset that there's always people kind of watching or that their value is somehow attributed to other people's approval. Mm -hmm. Um, And and I think kids not being able to escape from that, I think can sometimes be um, just detrimental to them developing their own, their own self-confidence, whatnot. I think, you know, on the other side of it, it's, you know, just screen time in general, I think has been, you know, dwarfed a lot of kids um, just, social skills, interactions with each other, resolving conflict, um, mm-hmm. you know, we see a lot of that. And, you know, it's, it's hard to know. I, I think to some extent we're, there's, there's a pretty strong narrative out there written that, you know, social media, cell phones, that they're having these detrimental impacts. And I think, you know, statistics could show that. But, you know, when I also want to answer that question with things like, you know, grit and hard work, you know, I don't know that my parents wouldn't have said the same thing about, you know, the generation coming up with them and the, the you know, generation before that. So, um. yeah, I, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because, I mean, as we were talking a little bit before this, that we are kind of the first generation dealing with our kids mm-hmm. having cell phones. It's not like we have a model to go and look and say, oh, this is how my parents did it or right. this is how, you know, they did it over here. It's we're learning that. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, and, and there are you know, some blessings with that. Absolutely. I mean, you got online learning, you got a lot of things Absolutely. that, uh, you know, now the information's right at your fingertips, but, but there are some challenges, mm-hmm. you know, and, uh, and, and managing that. And I think as dads, especially, uh, for us to be proactive mm-hmm. and not just, um, go, okay, we'll go, here's carte blanche, you know, go get on social media and you're in fifth grade. I mean, that, it's just not healthy. I mean, you see the statistics. Um, so I'm glad you, I'm glad you brought that up, mm-hmm. you know, because I do think it's, Something as we all have to be able to deal with, you know, mm-hmm. and learn how to deal with. So what else are you seeing out there? I mean, so you got cell phones, you got, it, it seems like it's changed kind of the peer pressure that kids are dealing with. Um, do you see other pressure as far as grades or do you see pressure as sports or? Maybe, you know, and again, I, th- I don't know if this is just more indicative of just that, that instantaneous, um, you know, just nature of our, of our culture in general. You know, I think that that's, everybody's impactful on our adult generation, right? As right. it is on our kids. Exactly. The only difference is that the kids don't know any different, mm-hmm. right? Um, adults are still kind of at that um, that place where we can remember a time when, mm-hmm. you know, and some of our kids, like, they they don't remember a time before, you know, oh, something happened, let me go post it or let me go read about it or let me, so. Yeah. Um, but I do see that kids, you know, are coming with just a whole lot more pressure mm-hmm. um, in general. And again, I don't know if that is, is it the platforms that's allowing kids to be constantly comparing themselves to, to one another or, you know, that's it's, it's certainly possible. I did read the other day in uh, USA Today just about anxiety mm. and anxiety among kids. And, uh, you know, there was even talk about 
uh, how suicide has gone up. I mean, yeah. with children ages 10 to 18, it's the second leading cause 18, of death. Yeah. I mean, it's unreal. Yeah, it, 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 it's heartbreaking, you know, and his dad, I can't even, um, just can't even imagine, you yeah. know. So um, how do how do we as, as dads or people in our community or uh, how do we partner with educators and principals, teachers to, to really reverse that trend? Yeah, I, you know, obviously, if I, I don't have a magic, magic answer to that, but I think, you know, you hit on it. The key word is just partnership. Is I think mm-hmm. the, the one thing that I do know is that, man, don't, don't be in isolation, you know, and I think a lot of times families are kind of on an island. I think it just all begins... Um, with communication you know Mm. it's talk to our kids like let's let's see what's going on let's be intentional and um, deliberate about you know getting them to open up let's not accept a hey how was your day good as the beginning and end of a conversation right let's let's push our kids and you know let's be the parents that are going to say nope Mm. not good enough you know let's before you go play Fortnite, before you go you know up watch tv or before i go and i check my email because you know work no, like we're, we're making this time intentionally to, to have some conversation. But I think if you can have that open dialogue with your kids and get to know like what are these, these triggers, what, what, are the, what is the source of this stress and anxiety. And then, you know, I think overcoming, I, you know, certainly blessed to um, in, in the experiences that I've had. But, but I do think nationally, you know, there, there is kind of a, a narrative that almost puts parents and teachers at, at odds with each other sometimes. Yeah. And I think again in my experience like that couldn't be further from the truth you know and you 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 see and understand how how both sides are so critical and I think it it does take parents advocating and um you know sharing concerns and giving context to teachers but but also parents understanding and appreciating like man teachers are experts that that are seeing their kids in different settings and um, you know, hearing what teachers have to say and not immediately rush into the conclusion that, you know, the teachers are out to get the kids or, you know, teachers don't have the best interests of the kids. And so I think establishing those dialogues and then, you know, in situations where, you know, you, you are getting, um, you know, these, these diagnoses of, of anxiety or depression, you know, it's, it's, again, not working in isolation. Let's involve counselors. Let's involve social workers. Yeah. Let's involve so- school psychologists. Let's involve... Um, you know, any and all parties around, you know, just circling around this kid so that they know, man, there, there's a lot of adults in my life rooting for me and here to talk with me and here to help me, um, you know, build up that capacity mm-hmm. so that they're able to overcome kind of the obstacles and the pressure. Some of them are, you know, from the world and some of them are internal. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I really appreciate you saying that. Um, because I don't know when uh, when I was growing up, you know, my dad was like, uh, "You'll be all right. Rub a little dirt <laughs> right, on it." You know? right. <laughs> and and uh, you know, sometimes that is true. You got to you know get kids motivated. But there's other times. I mean, there's deep seated things that are right. going on, and I think some of the things they're facing today are different than what we faced. And so, um, working with the school system and mm-hmm. talking to the counselors or setting up you know parent teacher conferences and showing up for those things. Um, and, and really working together. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, you're not at odds. I like how you said it, it, we're on the same team here. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, what do you think, you know, because a lot of times as dads, we're, we're, we show up for coaching our kids. Or we mm-hmm. show up for their ball games. How can we be present at school in a way that's helpful, in a way sure. that's um, helping the school and helping our kids too? Yeah, I'll be honest, and, and I think this is indirect, but I think just to be engaged, you know, and, and again, it just comes from those conversations, having, having conversations with your kids, and, you know, I, I would never measure, um, you know, a parent's involvement based on how many school events they're at or how many mm-hmm. times they volunteered to, you know, bring something for, you know, classroom or whatever. I, I think it's more subtle than that, but behind, you know, the home closed doors, you know, that's where just if there are these kind of rich conversations where, you know, parents are, are asking them, like, well, tell me about, you know, how is science class going? Mm-hmm. You know, what, what is that quiz coming up? And, hey, who are you sitting with at school? You know, and I just, having those kind of conversations, just really maintaining that, that relationship because, um, you know, I'm at, the, I'm at the starting line, you know, a little yeah. bit with, with my kiddos, but um, I have such an appreciation. I say this all the time, you know, of, you know, man, I want to steal, you know, pages out of you know these parents mm-hmm. that I'm talking to his playbook because I, I see how they're able to kind of strike that that balance of you know 
they are involved to the extent that they know what's going on in their kids' lives, right? They're investing in it and they're, 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 they're present. But they also have that balance where their kid is okay to struggle yeah. a little bit. You know, there's that healthy struggle. You know, mm. in, in classroom, we call it, you know, kind of the cognitive struggle, right? If we're not stretching them a little bit, if we're not challenging them, then, you know, we're not growing them. Right. And I think that's true socially. I think that's true spiritually, right? And mm -hmm. I, um, you know, not to divert, but, you know, I think about, um, you know, we've got a Heavenly Father that loves us enough to, to let us struggle a little bit, right? Yeah, I mean, how many yeah. times do we cry out and there's something that he could, he could fix it, but... You know, I thought about this the other day of, you know, Leighton was trying to help me with something. My, my five-year-old son was trying to help me with something, and boy, it really slowed down the task. <laughs> Whatever it was, right? It's just like, okay, buddy, yeah, you can help me. But it's like, but I want him to learn, and I want him to struggle, and I want to stretch him. And, and I, most importantly, just appreciate the fact that he wants to help, right? Mm. So the last thing I want to do is, you know, stifle that. Right. Um, but just, man, how cool is it that, again, macro here big picture that you know god's looking at us in that yeah. same way right yeah. that you know as a as a heavenly father how how cool is it that he wants us to be involved in the process um mm. of you know just advancing the kingdom so it's pretty cool that is awesome that's a great insight you know and um yeah it, it, i think we all have that tension of how much do you help and how much do you let them figure it out and right. you know kids are moving from dependence to independence and 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 our goal as parents is not just to raise great kids but godly adults you know right. we want them to be prepared we want them to be ready and i know that's what you do in school um, and so there is this a little bit of the struggle is where you grow mm -hmm. and where you learn um and i think that comes with homework too you know it's like how much homework do you help with right. and, you that's know right. how much do you say hey great debate that's yeah, right. <laughs> it is. yeah. Uh, you got an answer for that by the way no, no I'll, I'll defer to that one so, so. What, what if, from your seat as a principal, is there like one or two things you wish every parent could kind of know? Like when you see some of these great parents that do these things, what are... Yeah, I don't know that this is going to be magic. I think, you know, we kind of already talked about, you know, just talk to your kids, talk to your kids, be intentional, carve out that time, make it to where, you know, we all struggle, I, I, I can assume, you know, with, with finding that margin. Mm -hmm. But there's certain margins that are worth, you know, being made, and I... Um, read a book a while ago, I'm sure you've heard of it, but Freakonomics, mm -hmm. and there was, a, there was a little side case study thing that, that stood out to me. Now, it was talking specifically about, like, achievement scores and, you know, how Freakonomics with what correlates, whatever, but one of the things I thought was so neat, spoiler alert for anybody who hasn't read the book, um, but it was, it was taking you through um, all of the things parents do versus all of the things that parents are. And surprisingly enough, again, when they're looking at just achievement scores and, you know, again, I'd have to read the specifics of what the study was, but m my big takeaway from that passage was that kids are so much more impacted by who we are mm. than what we do. And I do think that that's a major generational trend, you know, as parents is that, man, we beat ourselves up, right? Yeah. It's constantly like, am I doing this? Am I checking this box? Am I doing enough for my kid? Am I, you know attending all this or providing them every opportunity? Am I, you know, going to that teacher when I've got to come? Am I doing enough? And I think, you know, things as simple as like, you know, who you value or what you value, how you spend your time as an adult and the, the you know, dividends that that pays mm. over time where the kids are just soaking that up mm. regardless. And I, one of the extreme examples I remember was that statistically speaking, uh, a, a, uh, house filled with books in some ways statistically was more likely to impact a kid than how many times you read to him and I'm not no way advocating don't read to your kids but right. it was like but why would that be well somebody that's got a bajillion books in their home seemingly would be somebody that you know does value education and is having those conversations and probably is you know leading by example with hey let's let's get in there and let's read you know yeah. let's grow so um you know again I say all that to say that I think talking with kids and um, man, just loving them, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and celebrating them and not just celebrating when they score the goal or get the A. Those are great, but mm. I think, you know, wow. if they miss the shot or they get the D, and if they're, if they're, you know, sharing with you that they've had some reflection on it or they've, they've learned something new or they're growing and, and, again, they're showing that kind of resilience, like, man, celebrate that, mm -hmm. right? Because that, that's, that's how you know that they know 100% like 
man, you love them no matter yeah. what, right? You don't love what they do, you love them. And mm. um, I think that's a, that's a critical thing too. Man, that is a great, I mean, man, take that sound bite right there. You don't, you don't just love what they do, you love them. Right. And, uh, and I think, you know, kids are so wired for uh, producing right. and, you know, they're achievement oriented. And, and somehow we have to come back and say, just like our Heavenly Father, right? Yeah. You know, um, it, it's not about what you do, it's about what Christ has done for that's us. Right. And, uh, man, for us, that, that's the goal right there. Right. So, um, wow, that's good. Uh, talk about, you, you do have younger kids, so I you do. and Amber have younger kids, and so what are you doing to invest in them and uh, prepare them for school and prepare them yeah. kind of for life? Yeah. Well, Amber's taking, you know, she's, <laughs> she's amazing, and she's, she's done um, more than her fair share of, I'd say, like the, the tangible preparation, we'll mm -hmm. say. Um, no, but I, I think it's just, um, you know, School is, is thought of as a very positive thing in our, in our, in our home, and I think, um, I, I, I don't know that I can take any credit for that other than to say, you know, we've just been blessed so far that, you know, Leighton's been really excited to kind of make that leap, and the Learning Center, you know, has just been mm -hmm. incredible, I think, just establishing that, that environment um, to where it is a positive place that, you know, kids are excited to, to come and to learn, and, um, you know, again, take, take no credit for that, that's, that's all been, you know, the church, and, mm -hmm. It's been Amber, but, um, you know, we do, uh, I think, making sure that there's applications, you know, that there's things that they're, they're lessons that they're getting, you know, by all the adults that are investing in them, whether it is, you know, church on Sunday or in mm -hmm. the Learning Center or, you know, if it is, you know, little league type sports things or something, you know, if there's adults that are pouring into them, you know, these, these character things that are very, you know, compatible with kind of fruits of the Spirit, but how are we making sure that we're intentional, we're pausing and um, you know, when things come up, when we're, we're not honest or, you know, mm. we are, you know, not grateful or, you know, how are we, well, stop, like, time out, let's mm. pause, let's, let's talk through that, let's digest that a little bit and why should we be grateful, why should we yeah. be honest and I think just not missing those teachable moments and, you know, I'm, I'm not speaking to that as, you know, oh, we're perfect, we never miss those teachable moments, miss them every day, but I think making that a, a priority is big, um, you know, prayer, prayer's been huge oh, yeah. for us. Um, mm -hmm. Prayer, you know, certainly meals, but that's something that uh, I think Amber picked this up from a podcast mm. um, a, a while ago, and we've, we've tried to adopt it in our family, but, but just basically ending that, the evening with, you know, kind of asking kids questions, you know, like, what mm -hmm. are you, and you know, we do this with our little three-year-old too, you know, but just, you know, what was your wow today? You know, what was something that was just awesome? You know, what, what are you thankful for? What do you want to ask God for? Um, who can we pray for, you know, just getting them to reflect, and, you know, sometimes you get, you know, Mickey Mouse answers, but surprisingly enough, you know, whether it's our five-year-old or three-year-old, I mean, sometimes they'll, they'll hit you with some zingers where you're just like, whoa, that's why we're doing this, yeah. you know, and they'll, they're developing some empathy, and they, they do have their head on a swivel to where we're driving down the road, and, you know, there's, you know, an ambulance or whatever, and they're mm -hmm. like, mommy, daddy, we should pray for them, you know, and so I think it's just a really, it's neat to see that investment which is hard sometimes mm -hmm. it's I mean our bedtime routine takes way too long you know but it's worth it right. you know and I think that those kind of things can really uh, I'm, I'm hopeful we'll, we'll continue to pay some dividends as they continue to get older and and are faced with you know I'm not naive enough to think that you know middle school is not going to be a, a whole nother set of challenges mm -hmm. than you know kindergarten or the learning center but um, you know do our best to equip them with it and I think the playbook is probably the same it just you have to continue to get more intentional as the challenges get bigger. Yeah. I, I love that, though. I mean, because I do think you're right. You're setting that foundation for them. And, yeah, that you are, they're going to face more challenges, but, but they're going to have that foundation, right. you know. And, uh, and I love when you talked about bedtime because just with my kids and everything you read, you kind of find that is the time that they'll open up. And right. it's always the time you're like, I'm so tired. I'm right. to bed, you know. But if we can be engaged in that time, right that's when you can get some of the best answers. And that's when their kind of defenses are down and, and they just kind of go, well, this is what's really going on. And, mm -hmm. and then being able to listen and ask the deeper questions, you know, just like, hey, what's going on? What's your wow? Or, you know, how are you really, or mm -hmm. what's going on? And then mm -hmm. you can pick up on what's really happening in their lives and what's happening in school. So I, I love that, Jason, that is so good. So 
how are you, you and Amber on the same page? Because I know being a principal, you've got to be worn out. You know, by the time you get home and sometimes it's late and you got sporting events and you got, uh, you know, musical events, you've got theater, you've got all these things that, and there's lots of demands on your time. How, how are you guys on the same page to come home and to be fully present, you know, yeah. when you get home? Well, and I'll be honest, I mean, that's an area of growth, you know, yeah. I think it, I think to some extent might be in all marriages. I think, um, it just starts with, I think, just appreciation. Mm. Um, I, I feel appreciated by Amber. You know, mm. she, she makes me feel that. Um, and I, I know I could do a better job of making sure she knows how much I appreciate her. Because the reality is, is yeah, th- my gig's not easy, but wouldn't trade it in a <laughs> second, you know, for, for what, you know, a day uh, in the life of, of what she's doing. It's awesome, you know, and it's so great. And, you know, I'm I envy a lot, you know, the, the time that she's able to spend with the kids, but, oh, there's nothing easy about, you mm. know, being there um, and just saturated with, you know, kids needing all day and, and whatnot. So I think at the end of the day, it's safe to say that she's earned every right and probably a whole lot more steps than I have and, mm. you know, is, is wiped out. So I think, again, just that appreciation, that gratitude and, and you know, going out of, the, out of your way, you know, to, to make the other one know that you mm-hmm. notice, you know, and sometimes it's a, it's a sweet text she'll send me. Sometimes it's a silly sticky note I leave her. But it's like, if we're not, if we didn't do that for a few days, it's like we'd notice, yeah. you know. And, and I think that's where you start to run on empty a little bit because you don't have, you don't have anybody filling your cup. You're just trying to pour out to everybody else's cup. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know that can get that can get hard. So um, yeah, I think that's I think that's huge. You know, I know something that that you share a lot um, that that we've always taken away you know from like Sunday sermons Mm. and and different series um but just the power of prayer like Mm. as a as a couple you Mm. know and I think that was that was a big thing for us when we did our our premarital counseling with uh um just it was actually her former youth pastor but Mm. we kind of reconnected with him and uh just an awesome guy and gave us a lot of real just you know good practical ways to just making sure that we are truly kind of keeping God at the center of our marriage and boy I mean there's definitely there's there's been chapters, you know, where that's that's definitely not been the case, you know, mm-hmm. where we are trying to kind of muscle through life kind of on our own, and we love each other, and we care about each other's needs, but it's, you know, it's very evident when we're both relying on God and doing that together, praying together, the the returns oh, of that, yeah. and, and how much it just enhances, um, I, I think, who we are f- certainly as a couple, but who we are as individuals, too. Mm. Man, I love that. Uh, because I think you're exactly right. I mean, the best thing we could do uh, it, for the next generation is, is point them to Jesus, right? And give them that spiritual foundation and let them know Christ and be in church and grow in Him. But, but it's also that marriage. I yeah. mean, they're, you talk about little eyes watching you read. I mean, they're watching your marriage. Right. And, and the way you treat your spouse and the way you love them and appreciate them. And I, Jason, I'm thankful that you said that because that's... That's what we got to do as men. We got to appreciate our wives and we got to lift them up and encourage them and um, be their biggest fan and biggest supporter. So, all right, just give us one or two takeaways from all this as you look at raising up this next generation and whether it's for you as a dad or whether it's as a principal or when you were teaching in schools, Mm -hmm. one or two takeaways just for all men. What would you say to us? Well, I mean. No pressure. Yeah, (laughs) summation. Um, yeah, I, I, I think acknowledging that um, it, it, it's not a job that can be done by one. It's mm. not a job that can be done by many. It's a job that if you're leaning into God and you're, you're, you're connecting with that, you're staying in the word, you're, you're praying, you're, you're surrounding yourself with, with support um, and accountability, um, you know, God can, God can do mighty things, right? And, and it can help you um, to to get yourself out of your own way, you know, to give you that perspective so when you are busy, when you are tired, when it is easier to, you know, look at your fantasy football stats yeah. instead of having a conversation with your kid or it's easier to let them go off and, you know, play Fortnite instead of having that conversation. I just think that can help center you to, to just maintain that. What is our why? What is our purpose here? Mm. What, what, is our, what is our goal as parents? And, you yeah. know, and again, I love how you say just the, you know, we want them to be, you know, godly adults mm-hmm. right we, we want them to be um kingdom workers and you know unfortunately the odds that that just happens organically you know without 
without some direction, without some, some encouragement as they try to shore up that foundation is, you know, it's not that it can't happen, you know, because ultimately, I mean, God's pursuing everybody, right? right. But um, we sure give our kids a better chance, mm -hmm. right, if, if we're intentional about it. Um, so, yeah, no, I think, you know, just to, to repeat, you know, but, you know, love, 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 and, <laughs> and celebrate, you know, again, those, th that growth, and, yeah. and, and just be, be plugged in. Mm, that's awesome. Well, I appreciate you saying that, because as a dad of a 15-year-old, uh, I remember when they were three and five, it went like that. Yeah. I mean, it just goes like that. Amen. And, uh, amen. And, you know, as guys, we get so busy in our jobs and building our careers and, uh, and those things. But, man, don't miss this time. Right. Just don't miss it. So. And this is, I mean, this is so, I, I appreciate so much the opportunity to talk. Because as I'm speaking, you know, and to, you know, any dads listening, you know, it's like, don't take it from this guy. It's like, oh, man, that guy, he's, you know, super. No, I, I, it's all of this. You know, I think. It, it does. It takes a church. It takes accountability. It mm -hmm. takes kind of just that reminding, um, you know, that, wow, like, we can always do better, right? Yeah. Every one of us can always do better about just, you know, making that time and making that a priority and um, investing in the right work. Mm, love that. So, Jason, one last question. Sure. What do you want your legacy to be? <laughs> Save the, the easy one for last. <laughs> yeah, right? There you go. Legacy. Um, you know, I... I love that, you know, scripture, just, mm -hmm. you know, well done, good and faithful servant, right? Mm -hmm. And I just, uh, it's, it's, I, I think that's it, you know, it's, all of our days are numbered, right? And I just think, um, whatever, whatever failures I've had, and I've had a ton of them, you know, whatever mistakes I've made, you know, those, those, those don't matter, right? Mm -hmm. If, if I can move forward in, in a life that's, that's dedicated to a, a purpose that's greater than myself, um, and to some extent, I'd say the same thing for, for certainly like pers personal or professional accomplishments, right? It's that, you know, those are great, you know, and, you know, there's a place for, for celebration on, on those things. But, um, you know, I just, I want to be affirmed um, that, you know, just as somebody that, that had that why and that had that, mm -hmm. that, that mindset that was just focused on, you know, working towards a purpose greater than myself. And again, I, you know, that's that's God. That's His mm -hmm. kingdom, right? And you know, how can I be how can I be used for for Him? And so, I, I don't know that there could be a greater legacy <laughs> than than seeing or, or knowing, or even if you know, I didn't know, but it just keeps on going. Um, you know, where there's people that you've poured into, mm -hmm. obviously, you know, our own kids, but mm -hmm. um, you know, just lives that you touch that can continue on that kingdom work you know after you're gone I, I don't know that there's a better yeah. legacy for me um, yeah. if, if I'd be so lucky so um, yeah I maybe not totally applicable here but you know I know it, the quote about leadership just talking about you know the sign of a great leader is you know an organization can just keep on churning you know without you the leader even being there right yeah. and I think um, that's the thing is as a leader of a household or a leader in a marriage or whatever it's like gosh if you're if you're pouring in and doing the right work um and you are centered in you know just advancing the kingdom that it's like you know after you're gone that those things would keep churning yeah you know? and that's what we pray for right absolutely yeah, yeah. so jason thanks so much really appreciate, oh, appreciate you, you appreciate your leadership me. and the impact you have on on so many lives so let me pray for us Father God, thanks for today. And God, I thank you for every man who's watching right now. And I pray, Father, that um, we would just have a deep understanding of, of this time and that we would make the most of these moments, God. And I pray that we would raise up this next generation in you and, and that we would focus them on you. Father, I thank you for Jason. I thank you, Father, for all the principals and the schools that are out there, God, for our kids. I thank you for the teachers that he pours into and the children that look up to him and and I pray for all of our kids and their teachers. And I pray, Father, that we would be partners together, um, God, to raise up this next generation. So, Lord, we love you. And I pray for just intentionality in our lives. And I pray for every one of us to one day hear those words, well done, good and faithful servant. You know, well done. So, God, let that be our heart and our legacy. And it's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. 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 Jason, thanks for joining us today. Yeah, thanks and, so much for uh, me. Guys, thanks so much for watching. And tune in next month uh, as we'll have a new podcast and also be watching every Friday for the Man Minute that's coming out. And those things are so good in keeping us on 
task as God has called us to be the men in this day, in this generation. So, so thankful for you all. Have a great day, and God bless.